There's no Western leader that has been in office as long as you have. Do I care about that? Because the Western leader is a Western leader. Because electorates normally <laughs> throw <not> electorates <laughs> normally throw people out. The nature of electorates and oh, democracies yeah, yeah. is that people get tired of it and they move that, to another person. That is if you are telling me, you know, that everyone has to conform to what the West tells us to do. I'm not one of those people. The Western world is a world on its own. Okay. It has many good things that they do. It has many bad things they do. There's no democratically elected leader in a generally accepted democracy that has been in office as long the, as you. Democracy is not uh, defined by the West. No. If it does, then what happens of the contradictions that happen in the West? When you watch Western media, have you realized that most too often what they talk about is human rights violations in Africa? If they do not talk about LGBTQ rights in Africa, they are going to bring up ethnic clashes or um, ethnic discrimination in Africa. Now, I'm not saying that those things do not exist or some of these leaders do not commit all these human rights violations. I don't know what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if you make your whole agenda on talking about things like this, how much credibility can people begin to give to your organization or to your media house? Example, the BBC, they are fond of calling African leaders authoritarians or dictators or tyrants. They are good at that, but they forget to look at themselves and also see the kind of human rights violations they are doing or their politicians are doing. Remember, these dictators in Africa are funded by the West. Those dictators who have let the West take away anything they want from their countries get fundings from the West, from the Western governments. So on one hand, you are saying African leaders are corrupted, African leaders are authoritarian, African leaders commit a lot of human rights violations in their respective countries. While on the other hand, your representatives, your government officials, your politicians are the ones funding these so-called human rights violators in Africa. You get the hypocrisy in it, right? And if there's one person who has been on the spotlight when it comes to so-called human rights violation in Africa, that is no other person than Paul Kagame of Rwanda. Someone whom, in my own opinion, I believe is a Pan-Africanist. I believe is someone who is doing th something great for the people of Rwanda. Now, there might be some issues here and there. There were always issues here and there. But let's look at the bigger picture and see what the man is doing for his country. And ask yourself this question, okay? Let's put the human rights violation aside. Do you really think that if other African leaders were doing the same thing, like they were trying to fix their countries, do you know how far Africa as a continent would have gone. So my point is, in as much as we want to talk about human rights violation in Africa, let's also shine the spotlight on those African leaders who are doing things to fix the African continent, who are doing things to help the people in their countries, who are making sure that the people in their countries can eat well and sleep well. We must 
talk about some of those people who are doing an exemplary job in fixing their home countries. We should talk about those leaders, not just focusing on human rights violations. We can also talk about that, but there should be a balance. And also talking about leaders who have been there long term or who have been there for more than 20 years. I don't think in Africa, Africans are worrying about how long a leader stays in power as much as what they are going to eat. What I mean is this. There is no day in Africa you see an African really saying, Oh, I wish this leader could just leave power altogether. Or I wish we have a new leader every five or ten years. You will hardly hear that because that's not the main point of focus for most Africans. What you hear them say all the time is, I wish I had a good job. I wish I can build a good house. I wish I can earn enough money to provide for my family. That's all what most Africans are thinking about. And if there's a leader who can help these people, who can help Africans move ahead, who can help Africans get one step closer to their goals, that leader will be celebrated in Africa. It doesn't matter how long that leader has been in power. It doesn't matter how the leader came to be or came to power. Leaders should be thinking about the people. Leaders should be thinking about the country they are governing. Leaders should be making sure that the people are happy, that the people can have a place to live, that the people can have quality jobs to do, and the people can earn enough money to support themselves and their families. That is the first and utmost job of a leader. But you guys out there, what is your take on how the president of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame, is being lambasted by Western media on the so-called human rights violations in Rwanda? And if you're someone who lives in Rwanda. How is the situation over there? How are things over there? Can you give us an idea as to what Paul Kagame, your leader, is doing, good or bad? Just paint an overall picture of him as a person and as a leader. We will be happy to hear what you have to say. And please do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little did of good we, that the way you're doing just now, help us a lot and shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.